This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. The undefeated Kentucky Wildcats meet up with the West Virginia Mountaineers tomorrow night in the Sweet 16. Both teams meeting with the media this afternoon. Our sports director, Josh McKinney, joins us live from Cleveland with a look at what the Wildcats had to say. He continues tonight's live Big Blue team coverage. Josh? Well, Lauren, you know as well as I know, offense wins games, but defense will win you championships. And Thursday night's matchup between Kentucky and West Virginia will feature two teams that pride themselves on defense, especially the Mountaineers. Virginia Mountaineers advanced to the Sweet 16 with a 10-point win over Maryland, and they did it with defense, forcing 23 total turnovers and scoring 26 points off of those turnovers. But the Kentucky Wildcats feel they will be prepared for the pressure. Um, I don't know if it's much different, but we know that they're going to play hard and it's going to be a physical game. And, you know, we've been preparing for that all week. And, you know, we still haven't watched a lot of film, but I'm sure we're gonna, we are. But, yeah, like I said, you know, I know we know that they're going to be physical and I think we're going to be prepared for it. Now, Kentucky has seen defensive pressure before this season with teams like Louisville and Arkansas, but Bob Huggins, West Virginia head coach, is one of the better defensive coaches in all of college basketball. So we will see what kind of adjustments the Wildcats have made when they take the court tomorrow night. Live outside Quicken Loans Arena in downtown Cleveland, Josh McKinney. Lauren, back to you. All right, thank you, Josh. Good stuff. Now, you just heard from Coach Cal, or excuse me, the Kentucky players. Let's hear from the opposing side. With many counting out West Virginia in the second round against Buffalo, the Mountaineers are playing with kind of a chip on their shoulder, ranking first overall in steals per game at just under 11, and forcing 23 turnovers in their win over Maryland in the third round. They know they deserve to be in the Sweet 16, and they are confident in their press. Why wouldn't it? You know, we've been playing this way all year. Um, we've had success against everybody, you know, no matter what style or what type of players they have. So, you know, that's the only way we play, and, and, and it's just up to us to make it work. I, you know, I, I think it worked for a lot of groups. It's just a lot of guys, I think, have – I mean, we, our uh, field goal percentage defense is probably the highest that I've ever, I've ever had. Um, you know, we pressed at Cincinnati, was more conservative, so we could still keep the field goal percentage down. We're, we're – I mean – well, I'll give you an example. I think the Maryland game at halftime, they were shooting almost 55% and we're shooting like 33 and we're up by one. You know, so we give up some things. A little NAI basketball news. The U-Pike men's basketball season ended in heartbreaking fashion in the Elite Eight in Kansas City Saturday. But for senior guard Kenny Manigault, the awards keep rolling in. Manigault already named the Mid-South Conference Player of the Year was named the NAIA Player of the Year. This is the first time ever in U-Pike's history a player has received this honor. KJ led the NAIA in total steals with 83 and scored a career-high 44 points against Life out of Georgia, which was the fifth most points scored by an NAIA player in the 2014-2015 season. And Steve, that is sports. All right. Thank you, Lauren. We'll be right back.